if you have the radius tool over the course of time, it might get damaged, you might drop it, uh, you might use some particularly nasty wood, and it just dulls it all. Although really, once you get these things sharp, they don't dull very often. Now, one thing you know I look at, I mean, obviously, if you're not getting a good cut, that, that's the best evidence. But um, usually, if you're not getting a good cut, I can pick up and look at it. And I'm just rolling this one around. And what I'm seeing right off the bat, even with these glasses, and I usually try to sharpen, you know, wearing something like that, but I'm seeing light bounce off of this tip and this tip. And if I'm having that happen, what that's telling me is I have a flat spot because light can't bounce off of a point, and you need a point if you're going to do some, you know, cut the wood. Um, so we've got a flat spot on here. So this is going to need a little bit of touching up. And I'll go ahead and do a little filing as well just to show you, um, you know, how that tends to work. So I'm going to grab a clamp and clamp this to, uh, this is just a block of wood that I, that I have right here. And we'll clamp it to that. Now on the top of this block of wood, it just, just looks at a 4x4 four four post. Um, I've given myself a um, indicator line at, at 45 degrees. So I'm going to take my file lining up with that indicator block. And, you know, and being a, tri a three square triangular file, I want this top edge flat. So when you saw me doing this little tweaking around here, I was making sure the body of the cutter was um, perpendicular to the block. So when I you know, file it at 45 degrees here, I want to make sure that's flat. Always filing on the push stroke and just trying to clean it up a little bit. All right. They usually really don't need much. Yeah, that, that made a big difference, just those few strokes. Um, when you're filing and when you're you know, tuning these things up and such, if I take my file and I lay it on the crest of the tooth from the, of the how it's, the angle that's created, and I set this on here, I'm at about 45 degrees. Um, sometimes, you know, they wear down or whatever, they're only at about 30 degrees or something like that. You really want to bring it so that tooth's at about 45 degrees. You know, at the points like this, it's going to cut so sharp, if it's down here, it's much more likely to um, slice the fibers, which, which is what we're going for. Um, on the outside, if I need it, or sometimes I need to clean up that inside a little bit, if I'll do that, I'll take my thumbnail and I'll hook it over the first tooth, and I'll just take the file and come in and work it that way. That's if I have a little bump or whatever. But when you're filing this front tooth, I'm only doing the top edge. I'm not trying to touch that bottom edge at all. That's why I slide my thumbnail over it to keep from hitting it. So I'm going to look at it, and sometimes you need to do the outside flat. You shouldn't have to do it much. It's kind of awkward because of the, uh, of the handling, particularly when I'm, I'm trying to keep this visible. But in that case, I'm going to be filing down, just trying to touch that up, just trying to touch it up. But once again, what we're going for is we want those teeth to make a pretty radical um, V. So I'm going to take this and hit it on the stone. And I'm looking for that reflection. All right, now, just going to give a double check. This looks pretty good. You can tell that it's looking good is if I'm going to take a piece of scrap stock and going cross grain, make a couple of slash marks. And if you're getting nice lines, I mean, not as good as an X-Acto knife, but not that far away from an X-Acto knife, um, then, you're, th then you're doing okay. So that's the first test. You know, am I getting 
decent lines. Second test is to put it back on your tool. And tighten it down. And I don't know if you can get a uh, side shot of these. But it'd be nice if you could see the, um, can you see the angle that V is in the middle? Based on the angle the teeth are coming back and the uh, angle at how the teeth are formed in the front, if, the, if that's showing. All right, so then, bottom line, the, the real test of the tool is I'm gonna set it, set it down, dig my pivot point in, I'm gonna make a cut this way, see if I'm getting a good line. Now it's fuzzy on one side, I'd expect that, that's the bevel side, but it's crisp on the other. Come back the other way, am I getting two good lines? So when you are and you cut, you should get a nice crisp, you should get a nice crisp channel. That's what you're going for. That's when you know the tool's sharp. If it's tearing the fibers, you need to tune it up. Now, that being said, some wood is just spongy, some wood is just not nice wood. And you're gonna have to try a little harder to maybe get those points a little more radical angle, you know, or whatever. But for most domestic hardwoods, um, what we have here should just be fine.